Okay, first things first, my name is not Martin, my name is Adrian. <laughs> sorry for that, I'm just I'm a little, sorry. I'm a little idiot by filling out forms. <laughs> um, yes, okay. Um, today we have a lot of different talks about testing. And my point of testing is um, we want to make testing a point and click adventure of your applications. And therefore we have the UF5 test recorder. And before I start, I want to talk a small second about testing. So everybody knows testing, everybody knows how important testing is for us and for our applications and for software quality. And, oh, back. And everybody knows this pyramid for testing, yes? And the different test tools, test frameworks, test languages, and whatever is there for testing our UI5 applications and to start um, with all these different tools. Um, and they are all different, they have all different targets for testing and what to test and how to test and but they have all, all of these tools have one thing in common. Uh, taking, the, taking the argument from last year, uh, we have to get the shit running and then we have to get the shit testing. And for all this stuff, we have to write the code and code and code and code. And that's the thing why my colleague, which cannot attend today because he got a father, um, uh, thought about, can we do it better? And I don't know, anybody of you knows ECAT? Who knows ECAT? Raise your hands. Whoa, okay. It's one of the tools I'm really <laughs> using in the NetWeaver of SAP. The other tools are just missing, I don't use them. Um, ECAT was a really cool testing because you can connect from an SAP system to another SAP system um, and record your interactions with the application you are using. And they record everything, every mouse click, every button, every text, everything. Then you can stop the stuff and then you can replay your interaction with the SAP system completely. And that's the thing. My colleague, okay. Sorry, it's a bit. It's probably no sudden movements. I'll try to find a better one. Okay. Should I continue? Yeah. Okay. So, and my colleague was in, at work and think about a something similar approach for your F5 testing because he gets annoyed of writing code and writing code and writing code. And therefore, we decided to create a Chrome extension. And why a Chrome extension? Sorry for that, that's an old picture because Chrome is blocking me today. <laughs> um, why a Chrome extension? Because with a Chrome extension, we are able to interact with the browser pages directly. And the second one is we have a great distributional platform for our application. So everybody who has Chrome can use this stuff. And I think that's a tool which is really sensible for everybody, not only for devs, not only for developers. Because our target is also to take a PO or whoever is using our application to write the tests for us. And then we as a developer, we have just to pick up the tests and then say we run it. So that's our intention. And that's the idea. I love you, babe. Um, so for this, I have a small use case prepared for you. Um, just simple list and detailed pages and first of all I want to okay um, first thing is always you have a list and you search something you pick an item and then you check okay on the detail page it's working or it's not there should I use Sorry. this one Maybe we could switch mm -hmm. just turn it off. it's working yeah okay it's better um, now it can be a little bit complicated because I have to show some coding but now Oh my, maybe. Okay, so first of all, I have to switch to the Chrome extension, so therefore we um, escape the full screen. Ah, come on, now we have it. Can you make a stand up for me, please? And hold the microphone. Because I need both hands now. So somebody, okay. Um, so let's start with the UFF test recorder. So we have a simple and small icon. So first of all, just a use case. So when you open the Chrome extension here, 
Does it work? Okay. Yeah, it does okay. Um, when you open the Chrome extension, you get several different pages shown for um, example, okay, this you can record these pages. Okay? Um, but when I show here on Google, it's not a UI5 application, I can't record the stuff, and um, I can go further on, say, okay, open UI5, UI5 coin is also not the application I want to show. I want to record the application which really contains UI5 coding. Therefore, we have this small little button, and Chrome is the, and Google is there a little bit restrict. We have to request this uh, permissions dynamically. Therefore, I accept it. And then I can see I have just this one, this single page for me c containing UI5 context currently, or a UI5 application. So therefore, I click on this. And then we are at the recording process. That's everything. So as I said before, we just want to search something. So we click on the item. We're typing text and we're typing a car into. And I will say, OK, please, my test starts every time only with searching car. So we replace the, task, the text to keep sure we only search for names which uh, contains car. And then we get here some in additional information for the searching of the, sim uh, the single items. So we have a search field and we have a local ID for the search field, which is called search field. Um, really easy. And we got some information here. Um, with UI Very 5, the coding would like, uh, looks like this one. Or Test Cafe looks like this one, the single line. It's just a line of code you have to insert to execute this action. So we save the step and go a little bit further. So I search for this one. OK, again, same, same action. So save the step. And now we see some little bit of magic. The page interacts with my extension. Wow. And <laughs> that's what we want. And then I go here and say, OK, I just pick out the a car, VW Golf White. And then I got a pop-up, which shows me some Heinz, which properties I can choose to get a really good matching pattern for my control I want to pick up. And I will check uh, this one, this context title, car, VW Golf White, and save it. And now. I have here, again, um, my action, a press action, combination of attributes, and it's the binding context with main data title, for car, for we golf white. And I save the step also, and again, I get some information that we have no local ID because this is the most secure way to select the stuff, right? Um, we got some magic again, it interacts with my application, and then I go here and click on and say, okay, I have now the wrong text selected maybe no it's just the wrong action i want to put up so i don't want to check an exist i want to check the text which is inside my text field and therefore i take a some assertions into and the first one or the highest matching or sensible one is selected here and it's the text attribute so i can expand it a little bit so we can see here it's the big text stuff, and again, I have some code preview, maybe test cafe, OPA 5, whatever. So pick it up to the right again. So I save the step, and then for me, I think it's done. So it's the first single simple test. Um, I stop the recording here. The page is again as in a, a normal mode and not uh, injected by the, by the recorder again. Then I can here assign some text, more descriptive stuff for um, for maybe processing and storing. So I call it UI5 con 2019, test category, let it as it is. And then we save the stuff. And now we have this test case stored in the local Chrome storage. So we can recall it every time, uh, uh, again and again. And we have these four test steps here. And now, now comes the part which is the most important of this thing. Um, I got the code just by right-clicking some things, and I got the completely code written. I don't have to do anything more. And I think that's the, the biggest point here. We have a complete page or complete test set of one single use case for my OPA test cases. And I can now take this one, download this stuff, put it into my integration test folder. I have here the old one, which I can override now. 
So I just make an, an overriding stuff thing, put it into my uh, yeah, an IDE, whatever, and then I just use um, the dev tools, the comma, start stuff. I will use the CI version and can throw it into and I can run it and it runs through and I have a valid test and it's there. So that's, I think that's the biggest, <laughs> biggest use case. <laughs> Beside of this, it makes no sense for a single developer in a team to have his test cases only for himself. So therefore, yes, we are developer and we are thinking for developers. Um, we can go out of the test and switch to review recorded tests. And therefore I have some pre-recorded tests inside my extension there. They are all stored in the local storage of, of Chrome. They are not shared with Chrome or between different devices. It's just local on your machine. But we edit here uh, the UF5 test recorder stuff. I can now go there and so say test settings here and I export can export it to stuff. And then I got a UI5 con 2019 test case JSON file, and that's my export. And with this export, I can do whatever I want. I can send it by email, I can put it into my Git repo, I can versioning and whatever. So you can version your test cases. And the, the cool thing is, this export is for the test recorder. So if I exported this stuff, I can then generate UI very five coding, I can then generate test cafe coding, and I then can generate OPA5 coding between the whole project and not only the single developer. And I think that's also cool. Um, so I can export it, throw it, whatever, and at every point I don't, I don't need, whatever. And then, so I think we have the cool thing here. And I already imported stuff, so we exported stuff, so we need also things to import. So I will import and test case I had before, which is my presentation walkthrough. I can import the stuff and then I got some simple message there, saved in local storage, okay, nice. And then I go into my test case and I get a complete test case from somebody other. And that don't have to be a developer, that can be oh, whatever, who doesn't understand coding for, for himself, okay? He can just pick your application, test it, type in the stuff, and then he can send you the JSON file. And then you can import it and then can you review the test steps. And that's another use case. So for debugging, for issue tracking and whatever. So all the time we got some issues badly described, okay? Uh, something is not working. Yeah, what is not working? So you can open an issue and attach this single JSON file and the developer who has to debugging the stuff can pick up the JSON file, import it into the test recorder, and then he can go there, pick some seconds, and start a replay. Oh, it took a little bit longer than expected. Ah, take the second. I have a two second delay, but maybe Okay, take the other one. Maybe I have to refresh. Uh, record the tests at every time for presentations. Finished in the last second, so make a one second delay again. Now, you can replay the whole test by yourself with any other framework. It's all done in your Chrome browser. It's all done without any other stuff. You have one tool and you can do a lot of things with this. You have a lot of different use cases. You can replay the step or the parts step by step by yourself and debugging your Chrome browser and debug your application on the other side and then you can see where the error happens or where the, the bug comes up. And that's step by step and I think that's the best description for issue tracking than any description from anybody other. Because this can be replayed and you don't have to figure out did he this button or push he this button or maybe he had some search before or a delayed search or whatever. And I think that's a really cool thing um, to have in the toolbox.
Ah, come on.